I can't remember the last time that Kotlin got a new operator, but that is about to change uh, with the introduction of the new range until operator, or the dot dot less than operator, which is a new way to create open-ended ranges. Now, if your first thought is that this new operator is just an alias for the long existing until function in Kotlin, you're actually not that far off, but you're also missing out on some powerful new things that you can do with the range until operator that you couldn't have done before. So let's change that and get acquainted. Little disclaimer in the beginning, just so you know, as of now in Kotlin 1720, the range until operator is still experimental. It's going to be a bit until you can use it just in general Kotlin code. But it's always good to stay on the bleeding edge, look forward and see what's coming next, right? So let's just examine this uh, operator in its current form and see why I thought it would be important we would take a closer look. To understand why this new range until operator warrants its own video, we first have to understand that its introduction does more than just provide some syntactic sugar. It also removes a bunch of speed bumps that you might have hit with ranges before. And to motivate that, we briefly have to revisit Kotlin ranges as they currently are. Bear with me, I'm going somewhere with this. So, Classically, there's two ways to create ranges in Kotlin. The dot dot operator, also called range2, and until. You use range2 or dot dot to create something called a closed range, so a range that includes both the lower and the upper bound in its value range. Something like this range from 0 to 10. And then we can do common things like checking if a certain value is within this range or not. Shouldn't be too many surprises here. Uh, 7 is certainly included, 10, the upper bound is also included, and 11 falls outside of the range. And then the other thing is until, which you can use to create open-end ranges. So ranges where the bottom bound is included, but the top bound is not. So a range from 0 until 10 doesn't include the 10. And this behavior is also shown with a couple of little inlay hints that give us an idea of what this until function is doing. But there is two somewhat subtle points about until and these open-end ranges that are worth pointing out. So firstly, until never was an actual Kotlin operator. It's merely a convenience function. And the reason why it kind of feels like an operator is because it's marked with the infix modifier. So rather than call it like a dot until and then in parenthesis b, you're allowed to call it as a until b. But the word until sure looks a whole lot different than the neat little dot dot operator. Secondly, let's look at how the until function is actually implemented. My inlay hint here actually shows me that just like the dot dot operator, until also returns an int range. But let's click into the function and see what it does internally. Huh, would you look at that? It's just using the dot dot operator internally. And what it does is it just drops the last value that's not supposed to be included in the range. Ah, uh -huh. so we are actually not creating a true open-ended range. We're just creating a modified closed range. So until is actually a little bit of a hack, at least internally. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a good hack. Uh, for the most part, it's actually so good that you probably never noticed it or never even thought of this internal behavior. Because it doesn't matter if you're looking at integers, longs, chars, they all work perfectly fine with until. But all of that is for one specific reason it's pretty easy to figure out what this second to last element in the range is. You know, just subtract one and you'll be fine. Just like we say in this int.until function. But as soon as you're moving away from these integral types, all of a sudden it's not that easy anymore to figure out what that second to last element is. And remember, if we're really representing everything as a closed range, then we need that element to define our upper bound. Take floating point ranges, for example. How would we represent the range from zero to just under 1.0 using a closed range? What's the next number down from 1.0? Is it 0 0.99, 0 0.999? How many nines should I add? 
these are the moments where you realize that floating points really aren't as intuitive as you might think. If we just add more and more nines, at some point IntelliJ will just realize that, well, given floating point precision, we've ended up at exactly 1.0 again. But floating point numbers aren't the only thing. Think of creating a range of datetime objects. What's the last timestamp before March 1st, 2022? It is in February, so is it one second before? Is it one millisecond before? Is 2022 a leap year? Does that matter? Well, yes, of course, if you're feeling adventurous or maybe particularly caffeinated, you might find a way to find this out. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be pretty. Sure, you might dive deep into floating point numbers and work out that you could use the next down function, which uses some native maths, to find the next representable double value. But if you're printing that range, are you really going to be convinced that it's not missing a decimal? If I make this range go from 0 to 10, the last digit even happens to be an 8. That doesn't seem right, even though it probably is. Or imagine wanting to check if two ranges are adjacent. Is 0 to 9.999999 adjacent to 10.0 to 20.0? Unless you dive really deeply into the mechanics of floating point numbers, you're gonna have a hard time checking the statement at a glance. And this is also one of the reasons why you specifically couldn't use the until operator with floating point numbers, for example. It's just messy. Because what Kotlin really needed was a way to properly represent open-end ranges that store their lower and exclusive upper bound directly, rather than doing the whole song and dance conversion to a closed range. And this is exactly what's being introduced alongside the dot dot less than, the range until operator, a proper way of handling open ranges. Let me quickly enable the feature in my Gradle configuration here, and then we're already ready to take a look at what I mean. All I have to do here is set the Kotlin Options language version to 1.8. Make sure you don't confuse it with the JVM target, that's a different thing. Let's wait for a quick import. And now let's try once again to create that dreaded range of doubles from 0.0, .0 to 10.0 exclusive using our new operator. I will have to opt into using it, but that's quickly done. And look at that, the code just works. The inlay hint that you can see here already immediately gives away the surprise. There is now a way of properly representing our ranges with the new and generic open end range class. And this isn't just an extension for floating point numbers only. Let me bring up again two dates, maybe those that define the first quarter of 2022, so January 1st and April 1st. With those, we can create the first quarter range using our new operator. And lo and behold, we get an open end range of local dates, no manual intervention required. Look, if I uh, click through, you can see that nobody wrote a specific extension function for date time. These just happen to be comparable objects. I just command clicked the operator and we can see that this new range until operator is defined for all comparables. And what it returns is an open end range. We can take a quick look inside and you probably guessed it, see that it simply stores a start value and an end exclusive value without any hackiness. And that also removes the whole question of what number comes before 1.0 or uh, what's the timestamp just before a certain date. Instead, you just save that specific number or that specific date. Of course, it's important to check that it actually does what we expect. So let's make sure that April 1st is not in the first quarter, which works just fine. And while we're already here, we can also see that the string representation of these ranges looks so clean and so smooth. Well, I mean, that's excellent. So there's really just one question left. How does the new range until operator work with the basic types that you could always use until with for now? Uh, stuff like ints and longs. Well, for those, it just returns their respective primitive range, like int range, for example, as it was always the case when you used until as well. 
The difference is really just that the integral ranges like int range now also implement the new open end range interface. So any int range now knows its end exclusive upper bound, which means if you're writing functions like a filter in range extension for lists of comparables, you can feed it ranges that have even been created with until, with range until, and in fact, even with range two. What this backwards compatibility also means is that you don't have to immediately change all your code using until to use the new range until operator. Though when the operator gets stabilized, we'll start to slowly nudge you towards using it since it's just a more potent replacement and it's also just a little clearer. Plus it stops you from accidentally misremembering which range to use exactly. By the way, I didn't just make that last part up, we did some extensive research that showed that using these new operators can really get rid of some confusion that people have. And less mistakes in code is always a good thing. As with everything, I think it's important to range around on your own for a bit to really cement everything that we've talked about in this video. Things like that there's a new range until operator, which you can think of as a plug and play replacement for the until function that this new operator can do more than the until function, that you'll be able to specify open-end ranges properly and without any workarounds, and that this new operator is entirely backwards compatible. It will also give you an opportunity to explore things like some bonus floating point goodness. For example, how float ranges that have nan as one of their bounds are always considered empty. But before I let you go, let me squeeze in one more little bonus tip. As a self-proclaimed standard library enthusiast, if you are thinking about writing code like this using the new operator, it is still time to stop and think for just a second, because there is still a better way. Remember that there is a last index function as well as the indices function itself. So this is the kind of stuff that I cover in some of the other tip videos. Make sure you don't miss those. Well. So only one question remains, how long will we have to wait for the range until operator to be usable? Well, first of all, you can opt in right now, but I also do have the inside scoop. The range until convention is set to be released in 1.8, but the standard library API is still going to be marked as experimental even then. That means you'll be able to use dot dot less than in 1.8, but you'll have to opt into using all the experimental functionality. The team is going to refine and stabilize the standard library API over this time to make sure that it's the best it can be. Good things take time. I think it's going to be great to align the behavior of ranges in Kotlin even more with the intuition you probably had about them anyway. Now, if only you could help me convince the team to transition from the dot dot operator to a dot dot equals operator, you would make me very, very happy. Because then I could just truly turn off my brain and never think about what each of these range operators meant. Until then, I'm just going to rely on the inlay hints in IntelliJ. That's kind of what I always do. There's a couple of other cool pre-release features in Kotlin 1.7.20, things like generic inline classes and also data objects and of course a bunch of other just general improvements as well. I have those covered in our 1.7.20 release overview video alongside a bunch of other videos where you can join me to take a closer look at some other features. Hope to maybe see you over there. That's it. Take care.